Hey, welcome, 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 everyone, to another episode of Rich Man Training the Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Tommy J. Slaughter, and we have a phenomenal guest here who's a man who comes all the way from Wall Street. Yeah, you know, like the Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah, that place where money talks and walks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the man is here, and today we're going to talk about wealth. And not just talk about wealth, but how to accumulate it. And we're going to go ahead and maybe talk about a little of generational wealth because as entrepreneurs, a lot of us, we're starting off kind of as um, self-employed and we start getting a bunch of cash. And a lot of times we don't know what to do with this cash, even so much cash that it starts to get to the point where it makes no point to keep investing to your business because your business is growing at a significant rate. So you got to start thinking about how to protect yourself because as an entrepreneur, guess what? There is no 401k retirement plan. There just is not. So with that kind of being said, who I have here with us is my good friend, Timothy Moore. Man is a Wall Street guy back in the 80s. He was there when the crash happened. He was there when things were good, bad, sideways, upways, downways, leftways, rightways. That's where he was at. Then he moved on and went to the career of helping others and as far as developing their generational wealth. And I know when he and I had breakfast, he explained to me that unfortunately, if you don't have a certain net worth, net worth, maybe it's a million or more, and he'll talk a little bit about that, you're not gonna get this information because this information that he's gonna give to you is typically kept close to the chest of people who have money and understand money. Is why as, as the rest of us who is maybe doing a quarter million in income or even less than that, we don't really get this love because we, you know, and lack of a better term is we don't have the money to pay the people to tell us what we need to know. And it's a sad thing is we continue to figure out ways to generate income and develop ourselves and build wealth for our family. We sadly don't get the proper guidance and that's why a lot of us burn up our cash because we don't get that guidance. So Tim's gonna come here and he's gonna explain it to us about what he does with more money finance advisory. Is that I said that right? Oh, more money advisory. That's correct. Okay. More, 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 yeah, more money advisor. Okay, wonderful. And he's going to go ahead and start a, we'll, we'll start off a little bit about his background. Then from there, we're going to go ahead and segue into some concepts and ideals of building wealth. And we'll talk about maybe some generational wealth, uh, some ideals about building gener generational wealth, which a lot of us really want to do as entrepreneurs. We want to leave something tangible, meaning financial, to those, our loved ones down the road. Correct? Yeah, I would think correct. So. Absolutely. So with that being said, um, Tim, thank you for joining the show. And you, do you want me to call Tim Timothy or? No, Tim, Tim, no, Tim is good. Tim okay, is good. Tim is good. Okay, I just want to be sure. I, I know I'm always respectful of people's names. So yeah. with that being said, um, tell us a little bit about your background. I know you took your guy from Wall Street. I know that from our breakfast and you and I had that conversation. But you no, know, paint a picture for us. What was it like? Here it is in the 80s. Wall Street's booming. Give it to us. You know, I was new, you know, wet behind the ears, and I had just gotten out in training probably three or four weeks before the crash. And, you know, it was a big deal. You know, the market was, you know, 22, 2,500 and, and down, you know, 509 points. So, mm -hmm. you know, one day we had a, you know, 20% drop. And Ooh. so that, yeah, that, 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 that was a big deal. So it was a learning experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Wall Street kind of told us half truths at the time. They said, well, you know, luckily for you guys, you, you haven't lost anybody any money. Mm -hmm. and, and that was very true. But for the, you know, next couple of years after that, people were, were very uneasy about investing in stocks and mutual funds. Okay. But it was, uh, it, it, was, uh, it was an excellent learning experience. So I was with, with Shearson Lehman. Okay. And this, and just, you know, in, industry-wide, there was a, a consolidation after that. And one of the things I ended up working for, for all, all three, you know, branches of, of, of Shearson, if you will. Shearson had already acquired EF Hutton. Okay. There was always, there was already a, a layman division. And so I started in Beverly Hills. Then after a little while, I was, I was transferred to, to an EF Hutton branch or what used to be an EF Hutton branch in Santa Monica. Okay. It, and then ultimately, I, I worked downtown for the Lehman Division, where at Lehman, that's all we did was sell stocks. You know, there was no mutual funds, financial planning. It was uh, really, it was too aggressive for me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you know, that's all they did was, was, was sell stocks. So it was just sell stocks. They were just jamming down people's throats, um, making a tons of cash. and. <laughs> A a absolutely. And so, you know, that, that wasn't my cup of tea. My cup of tea was 
was was more in the long term retirement planning, investment planning, uh-huh. you know, you know, working with the estates, and so that that's where where my career gravitated to, you know, really for you know for the past thirty years, give or take. Okay, so you you, you playing around with the stocks. Um, this is back in the eighties. Things kind of explode and crash. You see a lot of people lose a lot of money, which um has made several millennials, even with the 2008 situation, made a lot of millennials very skeptical about investing into stocks and playing in that world. And they're finding different ways to um, diversify and to build their own portfolio as far as building their wealth. And that's even holding true with a lot of entrepreneurs like myself, where I have some skepticism about going to stocks. And maybe you could tell us a little bit about what happened in maybe in 2008 from your perspective to maybe help us ease what we, um, people like myself, put us at ease about putting money into stocks and building our wealth that way. You know, you know, 2000, you know, there's, there's, there's a couple of, well, there's many type, type of risk and, and, and one type of risk is you, you own a stock or you own a mutual fund and, mm-hmm. and that sector is, is bad and it, it goes down and, and you lose money. You okay. know, typically whether you own a, a stock or a mutual fund, you know, uh, time heals all wounds, but, and, and that's what happened in 1987, you know, with, within a year, year and a half, you know, er, everyone who held on, you know, they, they were, they made up what they lost and, and, and had gains after that. Okay. The, in, in 2000, in 2006, seven, eight, nine, you know, what we had was a, 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 a screeching halt to the economy mm. and whether you want to blame it on, on sub, subprime mortgages or you know wall street and the, the bad debts you know it, it's kind of like being in a car and running into a tree at 60 miles an hour one one minute you're moving and the uh-huh. next minute you, you're completely stopped and so you know that period of time you know i heck i thought 87 was bad you know that 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 environment harkened back you know to to the great depression of the, of the 30s and so it, it was a, a difficult time Okay. And it, 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 it took, it took a while for, for people to recover. And that, that is very well true. And I lost a lot of money in that particular time. I, and I know friends who were high rolling and they ended up um, living in a shack <laughs> because of yeah. the result of that. It, it was a pretty nasty time and it took me probably about six years to rebound from that. So yes, as an entrepreneur, I did screw up. I'll tell people I lost a bunch yeah. of money at one particular point. So yeah. with that kind of being said, I'm an entrepreneur and something you are articulated to me is, well, Thomas, you don't have a retirement plan per se. You're kind of making your own money. You're self-employed yeah. um, and you need to figure out how you're going to go ahead and um, basically build your wealth and ultimately generational wealth. So articulate a bit, a little bit about from, for entrepreneurs, what would you tell us in essence about, Hey, Mr. Entrepreneur, you don't have a real retirement plan, but you got a bunch of cash. This is what I could do for you. So, so give us some you know, quick ideas and strategies on how you would explain this to an entrepreneur. You know, how, how, you know, I, I explained it is, is the fact that, you know, ultimately we, we have to take a history lesson and that, you know, to succeed in, in capitalism, you need to be an owner. Okay. And, you know, if you live in the, and so I'm, fr- I'm from the generation, my parents' generations, where, you know, it was uh, acquiring real estate or, you know, you owned your home, you know, you could, you know, purchase a duplex or a triplex, you know, if you save for a couple of years. Uh-huh. You know, today in, in California, Washington, on the East Coast, you know, real estate is, is, is so, it's, it's almost prohibitively expensive. There, there's still a, a wealth creation opportunity, though, and, and that's through, you know, owning individual stocks, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft. Mm-hmm. And so the, the, the business itself is, is the wealth management business. And so, you know, financial advisors, brokers, you know, we're looking, we're looking for the rich and the affluent. And, mm-hmm. and that, that, that leaves a, a large segment of the population. What the, the middle class really need is we need wealth creation opportunities. Okay. And, you know, they, they say youth is wasted on the young. If I only know then what I know now. And so, you know, Wall Street and the stock market, it's about learning from mistakes and, and, and looking at history. And so, you know, I, I still have a, a, a sale, a, a trade ticket, 
you know, from the 90s when I had sold a mutual fund and the proceeds were about $7,000. And so wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop real quick. When you said the proceeds for $7,000, is that you making $7,000 off that trade? Is that what you're saying? So what, it, so what I'm saying is, is I got in the business, I invested $5,000 into a mutual fund. Okay. A, f- a few years later, it, it was about $7,300. Okay. And so it was, the, it was an average mutual fund return. So okay, this, 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 this goes back to 93. So, you know, what I did with that, that money, I don't know. But, you know, <laughs> had, had it stayed in the, in the vehicle it was, you know, similar to an S&P 500, you yeah. know, from that, that's seventy three, seventy five hundred dollars. It would have grown to about seventy five, eighty thousand dollars today. Okay. Back then, we were selling Microsoft. You know, PCs were just getting started. You know, that 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 same seventy three, seventy five hundred dollars would have grown to almost three hundred thousand dollars if that money had had just stayed in Microsoft. Okay, I'm following you. You know, Am- Amgen uh, was a, a newer biotech company in the eighties. You know, had 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 that money stayed in in Amgen, you know, it would have grown to well over three hundred thousand dollars, as opposed to to the the seven the seventy five seventy eight thousand dollars it would have grown to in a fund. Okay. And so mm-hmm. so the the wealth to today in in two thousand nineteen, the wealth creation opportunity is to own individual high quality companies, Amazon, Apple. Microsoft, you know, a thousand dollars in Amazon ten years ago would have would have grown to over twenty thousand oh, dollars. Wow. That, yeah, big, big gains. You know, the that 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 same thousand dollars, you know, an Apple computer, you know, would have grown to over sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars. And so, by owning stocks, I'm not talking about day trading or in and out by by building a portfolio over time, uh-huh. you know, it, it allows you the opportunity to turn a dollar bill into a $2 bill or a dollar bill into a $10 bill. And those are the type of returns that you need to not only survive, but, but, but thrive in, in, in the coming years, you know, just due to the cost of housing, cost of living, you know, yes. co- cost of education, putting kids through college, you know, co- cost of retirement. And so, that's where you know my financial literacy has has come in, in in the sense to to you know tr- try and simplify wealth creation and 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 spread my vision. You know, back in the '80s, the co- commissions were very very high. It, it cost you you know two hundred dollars to buy a few shares of mm-hmm. Microsoft or Amgen. You know, today with with stock commissions are, are less than ten dollars. So whether you buy you know, a thousand dollars worth of Amazon or a hundred thousand dollars worth of Amazon, it's going to cost you less than ten dollars in commission to, to buy that those shares. And be, because of that, Wall Street has a tendency to say there's a product for everyone because sure. no one no one can make any money selling individual shares of Apple Computer, or Amazon, Microsoft, just to, to the fact that you know the commissions are four ninety five, six ninety five. But that's the best way today to accumulate wealth going forward and to have generational wealth. And so that's that's part of the message of my financial literacy and just kind of a, a personal passion of mine. Well, and I love you giving this information because this is not the type of information that most of us get. I didn't get this as a child, and I think they should be teaching financial literacy in just elementary school from when we're babies all through high school and the college, even business school, yes. teach financial literacy, which is such a disappointing thing. Even when if you yes. take finance classes, it doesn't correlate so much with your personal finances. It's focused on corporate finance. So I had to learn to kind of through the school of hard knocks about losing tons of yes. coin. So with that yes. kind of being said here, Today, 2019, it's such, it's just so many different ways you can build wealth and not just through stocks, but through real estate and everything else. And what I really want to ask you here is this, do you believe in diversification through not just stocks, but also owning property and different types of businesses and things of that particular nature? Is that something that you would advise somebody say, Hey, you know, you got say a million dollars. Would you advise them to diversify that million dollars in different investments, or would you tell them, "Hey, focus on these type of stocks"? Or what, give me your ideals here, and this is to help people figure that out. See, 
e even today, a, a million dollars is a lot of money. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it, it has some has some value. <laughs> oh, oh it, it, it has some value. And so, you know, if if, if you have a, a million dollars and you own your home, you own your own home. You know, there, there's nothing wrong, you know, with with getting an income property. You know, getting two, three, four units and okay. having something that can that can pay you. You know, you, you pay down a mortgage, you you have equity, and then, you know, rents are rising. You know, rents are, r rents are already rising in Southern California faster than, than, than income. Oh, absolutely. And, and yes. so there's a, right. there's a huge cry for, for rent control. You know, in, in LA proper, people are being priced out of, of rental units. Mm -hmm. And so if, 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 you, if, you could, if you can buy an in income piece of property, you know, I, I'm all for that. Warren Buffett has a has a saying that diversification is, is protection from ignorance, and so okay. when you look at his portfolio, his, his portfolio is very non diversified non diversified. Yes. So and and, and and that being, if you look at the the, the Nasdaq 100, you know that's one one hundred of the tech com tech companies, the smaller companies. Uh -huh. You know the S and S and P 500 actually is I think it's 515 companies. But you really can accumulate wealth, you know, by just owning five or ten different companies: Amazon, Microsoft, you know, Apple Computer. The uh, there's a, a lot going on in art, artificial intelligence with, yes. with Google and Nvidia, and so the the Wall Street diversification is, is having a, a portfolio with with hundreds and hundreds of stocks. They have a heck of a Wilshire 5,000 with 5,000 stocks. <laughs> but but what, what those portfolios do is, is, is they dilute your return. So, you know, everybody has, has had Amazon and Apple in their portfolio over the last 10 years. Yes. But, you know, but, but very few portfolios have, have, have turned a dollar bill into a $20 bill, you know, like, like Amazon has done. And so Correct. This, this, this fourth quarter last year was, was a, a horrendous quarter for the stock market. But if you look at a lot of, in, if you look at a, a small portfolio of five or 10 stocks, you know, many lost significantly less money than the indexes, than the NASDAQ and S&P 500. Mm, and so, okay. you know, what, you know, Wall Street is about history and research and, and, and going back. Okay. And so I, I've come to the conclusion that most of the portfolios that people own, whether they're in the retirement accounts or the IRA, you know, that there, there, there's too much dead weight. E even in the, e even in, you, you take 2017 where everybody made money. Yes. You know, the, the, the bottom half of the NASDAQ were losing money. You know, the, 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 the bottom the bottom of the S&P, the bottom of the S&P 500, you know, has, has a, a three-year negative return in excess of 20, 20%. 20 and so when you, when you study and, and look at past articles, there's a history of very few companies that are making a ton of money. Uh -huh. And in essence, they're lifting up the market. And so in, instead of, I, I say, well, let's, you know, let, let's, let's, let's buy the cream of the crop and, and drop the dead weight. So that, that's kind of how my investment philosophy has evolved, you know, over 30 years. And that makes perfect sense. Why would you want to invest into some type of fund that's carrying a bunch of dead weight and only have four or five companies covering it and showing your growth when you can expen exponentially grow your you know, income based off of just playing on the high, you know, basically the high performers. And I know um, Warren Buffett, as you spoke about Warren Buffett, and for those who don't know who Warren Buffett is, he is the wizard when it comes to investment. He's yeah. basically, the, the guy wizard is the Wizard of Omaha. The yeah. Wizard of Omaha, exactly. He's, he, he's just super rich, multi-billionaire, and has so many investments in a lot of the big names that we know, such as Microsoft, correct? I think he has played yeah. Microsoft and um, some other, uh, other big organizations. But at any point, go ahead. You know, when, 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 I, when I started in the business, yes. Warren Buffett's company, Berkshire Hathaway, was trading at, at around $2,000 a share. Okay. And back wow. then, they're saying, oh, you need to, you know, split the shares, make them more affordable. To today, 30, 31, 32 years later, those same shares are trading for over $200,000 a share. Wow. That, that's so, a 200% growth, right? Yeah, no, absolutely thousands. Of oh, so I'm sorry, two thousand too. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I suck at math. Yeah. That's why I got you. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
And, and so, you know, you know, he and his right hand man, Charlie Munger, who's about 95. Yes. Are, have, have, have just created enormous amount of wealth for, for people who have, you know, been, been around with them. And so the, the opportunity, you know, America was, was, was funded on, on capitalism and, and ownership. Yes. And so it, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, you know, funded on careers and jobs and, and labor. Correct. And so, you know, labor is a, is a, is a, is a, is a byproduct of, of, of capitalism. And so mm. the, we, we need to work because we need income, pay our mortgage, pay our bills. But at the same time, we, we need to strive to, to be owners. And in 2019, Am, Amazon is, is selling for $1,800 a share or, or mm -hmm. Apple computer is, is selling for $200 a share. You can, you can buy these phenomenal companies without tremendous amounts of tremendous outlays of, of cash in the sense that it, you know, you know, I, you know, I own a home. And so the, the, the cheap money for real estate is, 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 is buying your home. You know, mm -hmm. once, once you, once you want a piece of income property, you know, you know, they, they, they want 20% down. Correct. Plus closing costs. And so, <laughs> that was another 10, 20 thing grand. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, you know, you, you look at, you know, I look at, at duplexes in the San Gabriel Valley or triplexes in the San Gabriel Valley that are, you know, almost a million dollars. Yes. You know, you're, you're, you're talking about 200,000 down plus closing costs to, to, to get into some income property. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for a few shares of Amazon at $1,800 here or there, or Apple computer at $200, you can uh, uh, accumulate wealth by owning these shares for the long term. And so that's not a message that we hear often. Uh -huh. And it, it's that opportunity isn't in most of the 401ks that, that most employees have. And so, you know, I've, I've worked a long time and, 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 and God bless labor and, 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 and good careers. But at, at the same time, you know, labor is a finite resource that, that we need to wean. Ultimately we have to wean ourselves off of because we, you know, we have to retire and can't work forever. Right. And to that point, you're, you're absolutely right. And um, even that's the whole truth for entrepreneurs. We can only work for so long before we need to hang it up. And um, a lot of the people I've seen who's built generational wealth, entrepreneurs are not, you're hundred percent correct. They've had them. They made investment, long-term investments into stocks. Um, some of them precious metals, or they had a you know kind of combined um, portfolio of properties and whatever you may have. But you hit something on the nose that's like really, really important. I think a lot of us entrepreneurs, even I throw many entrepreneurs in this, we don't have an owner mind state. We yes. have an employee mind state. State yes. mind, and that comes from just generations, generations of whatever. You know, we come from a world of um, employers. And who's that? Dan Pena. If you ever get a chance to listen to him, folks, definitely look him up on YouTube. And he explains that chances of you become a millionaire is slim to none if you come out of a worker's family. The yeah. more likelihood of you becoming a millionaire, you come from a breed of what he calls winners, entrepreneurs, business owners, owners. Yeah. That's the people who are more inclined to make millions create wealth and generational wealth. Can I, can I interject one thing? Absolutely, yes. All of our parents told us, go to school, get an, get an education and get a career. Yes. You know, they, and so, because, you know, they were products of the 30s, 40s and 50s when we were in a manufacturing economy. And, and yes. so you didn't need a ton of education to work for Boeing or Rocketdyne and earn enough income to buy a house, send your kids to college. But the, the value of labor has been, been declining since, since the 70s in, in this service economy. And so today, anything that you can do to earn income and wealth outside of your paycheck is, is what we need to do with baby steps. Because the, the value of labor is declining right in front of us. And I love what you just said right there. Perfect. Just Let's freeze that for a minute. So walk us through... If you were kind of, let's take yourself back 20 years ago and you have this job, you're an employee and yeah. somebody says, okay, I want to go from employee to maybe self-employed then from there, maybe some investments, maybe walk us through some of your thinking on how you would approach that today. 
I know it's a tough question. <laughs> You, you, you know, it is a tough question, and, and, and both of us are on LinkedIn. Yes. And one of, one of the, the, the wisest threads or, or pieces that I read last year mm -hmm. was, was don't start a business, solve a problem. Correct. And if you can solve a problem, the, the business will form itself and take care of itself. Correct. And so the, that's, it's, it's the, it's the solutions that, that, that generate the income and, you know, that's, you know, that, that's, that's, that's the line of thought. And so obviously I, you know, I, I, you know, I, I've, I've been in the, in the financial services. And so, you know, my, you know, my, my, my thing is, or, or, or buying these companies, the, okay. you know, my mother lives in LA, I'm, I'm in Glendora and it seems like her house gets further and further away. Correct. On, autonomous vehicles are, are coming. Self-driving vehicles are, are coming, and so there are a, a lot of a, a lot of Nvidia, Google. There are a lot of companies that are pouring billions of dollars into autonomous vehicles today. Yes. And so there's there's a, a lot of opportunity to you, not that you put all of your money, but if you just start a, accumulating a, a little bit. Yes. And just the compounding will do wonders. And so that's so, if, you know, my thing is, 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 is by the stock. Entrepreneurial is great. My wife and I, you know, mm -hmm. own, own, a, own a business. But, but, you know, businesses require labor. And, and so the, the goal is, you know, we have to labor to pay our mortgages and our bills. But yes. whatever we can do to decrease the amount of, of, of weekly or monthly or annual labor, that's the that's the path. That's more the path that I would have liked to have been on 20 years ago. <laughs> so, so what I'm definitely hearing here is that, hey, as a young person, of course, you become a labor employer unless you come from a family who's already hardwired you to be an entrepreneur from Jump Street. But yeah. as you work as an employer or laborer, then you really want to try to figure out um, basically the best way to invest and keep that money to grow the wealth. And from what I'm hearing, you want to basically cut down on your – you know the, the level of labor that you have to produce to generate that income and in order to do that you have to make an investment if it be into stocks or if it be into property whatever it may be to allow basically the whole concept or the whole saying let your money work for you is that absolutely, what absolutely. absolutely. see this, this this is the the, the fundamental problem or or, or or just financial literacy 101 yes that on, on, on January 1st, a dollar bought you a dollar's worth of mortgage, a dollar's worth of Coca-Cola, yes. a dollar's worth of rent. Yes. On, on December 31st, it's going to cost a dollar, two, dollar, three to buy what in January you could buy for a dollar. Correct. Exactly. When it comes to, when it comes to healthcare or housing, it might cost you a dollar, six, dollar, eight to buy what you used to be able to buy for a dollar. Okay. And so yes. you, don't, you don't have to d ex extrapolate very far when you see that the purchasing power of, of your money is eroding. And so that's why you, you live below your means. You know, even though you can afford a Mercedes, you know, <laughs> you, 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 you don't have to buy it. Correct. I mean, the, but the, it, it won't be long when, when you look at the cost of college tuition, the, the, the cost of health care. We our our money has to work hard so that in in, in 2025 when we're ready to to spend on X that, yes. that we have su sufficient money to pay because if you just, I mean just look at, at real estate over the last five years you know pr properties are up you know 25 30 percent if if you had that money in a bank account or or a mutual fund you 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 have lost purchasing power because most haven't kept up with the price of real estate here in Southern California or, or Seattle or, you know, some places on the East Coast. And that's very well true. And to, to let people really actually know how I was able to build the runway to become an entrepreneur was actually through investments. So my wife and I, we had invested into stocks. We had invested into property. And when it was that time for me to decide, hey, I'm going to do this, go on my own launch my business consulting firm and create this platform, rich man train and everything else. I already had been preparing for this for over a decade. Yes. I had been putting the money to the side incrementally. And I wish I didn't buy the outing. 
are the medium. <laughs> I really do. Because here I just put an outlay of 50, 60 grand for a vehicle, and I should have just went on and bought me a damn Nissan or a Toyota for about 23 grand, and I could have put the other 20 Gs to the side. And that would have gave me some more money to be able to do some great things. And that's where I failed in starting my process of creating my wealth. Although I did a decent job, 10 years saved up where I had a few hundred thousand dollars. So you now know what I actually had. My launch pad was a couple hundred grand to start doing right, what I needed to right. do. Because I had you did to pay a good tuition. job. Yeah, thank you very much. I have to pay tuition for my daughter. That's five thousand dollars a month if you just want to break it in a month comparable on yeah. a year. Because I break yeah. my I break all my expenses down by month, yeah. even if it's an annual cost. Yeah. Um, if you want to talk about a lot of the different expenses that come out, that's the truth of the matter, was I prepared by making investments in building some wealth that allowed me to transition and invest into starting a business. And to yeah. and, and to your point. I'm at that point again, I have to reload. I have to reinvest because I need to stack some money for another 10 years. Now, not just another 10 years, but to prepare for my retirement as an entrepreneur, yeah. I don't have a 401k. Yes. I, don't I don't have some of the, those things that employees have. However, I have the power to be an owner. Yes. Very much like you. Yes. I want you guys to learn to become owners, shift the paradigm in your mind. And that's why I brought Tim here on the show is to start, painting the picture for you. Here's a man comes from the stock field from the 86, from the wall street, the 86 explained to you to invest, to save your money, to do certain things with your finances that prepares yourself to either build a runway or prepare yourself for retirement and build your wealth. So yeah. with that being said, now, Hey, we got our listeners to understand it's important that you start making investments. Let's talk a little bit about generational wealth. Cause I'm always curious about this. I don't really know about generational wealth, but maybe tell us some of your experience as far as maybe um, if you have some clients and some of the ideals that you spoke to them about, about preparing, not just putting money up for the self, but we're talking about three generations down the road. Could you elaborate a little bit on how, how you would explain this to somebody? You know, it's, it's really a, a funny phenomenon. In, in many instances, the, 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 the more money people have, sometimes the, the less they spend. Yes. You know, they say, you know, sometimes the richer or the, or the tightest of the tight wads. <laughs> and, 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 and ultimately, if, if, if you want to have generational wealth, you know, it, 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 it's about living, living within and, and, and the, under your means. Because you, who, 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 who so my wife and I are new, new grandparents, so we have a six-week-old granddaughter okay. you know no, no telling what you know college tuition is going to be in 18 when, when, when she's ready yes. and so you real estate appreciates the stock market appreciates and so you know tomorrow's not promised and so you want to live well and, and enjoy nice things you know but you 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 want to be able to to pass an inheritance down down to your kids yes i i listened to oprah winfrey has a master class and i i listened to an episode with steve hardy mm -hmm. and he was talking about you know i want my great great grandkids to to know who i was absolutely and and, and many times just you know the great the great the great great grandparents are a long lost memory because you know maybe they had a little bit that that they passed on. Mm -hmm. It's just that generational wealth is is very hard to obtain, yes. and the, the the sooner you have that owner mindset and put money away for the long term, the, the nothing is ever easier. But that's the best that's the best path moving forward. And I think you just tied it up really nice and sweet for us. And that's, that is very true. When I do look at families who have a strong kind of, um, we'll say values or has a strong kind of lineage per se, yeah. I always realize it has some ties to do with it's a family business and they've built a culture because of that, or there has been some wealth passed down and that just continues to kind of project and um, perpetuate going forward. And I notice a lot of those families, there's just something about them. They're all lawyers, they're all doctors. They've, they've become, built a legacy. Yes. That's what they've ultimately done. And you hit something on the nose. I, I never thought much about it. As much as I 
love my grandparents. I don't know much about them. And I sure don't know anything about my great grandparents. Yes. That that's the truth of the matter. And for myself, I'm thinking, okay, I don't want this to be the case for my great grandchildren. Therefore, I want to build generational wealth to pass down. And it's people like you, and I do appreciate him coming and talking on the show here. It's folks like you who can help develop our mind state to become owners, to have a state amount of owner and to create wealth and generational wealth. And for a lot of people who follow me, you guys are beginning entrepreneurs. A lot of you open and honest probably don't come from much. You're very much like me. I didn't come from a whole lot. Um, however, we have to change that. And people like Tim can give you the information, the education, the knowledge. So Tim, how do people, you know, contact you or go to one of your seminars? Or how, how, do, how do they get involved with getting education directly from you? Hey, well, I'm, I'm on, on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook. One of the things that I, I like, I've, I've started a, a More Money Stock Club on, on okay. Facebook. So it's a, a group under Facebook, More Money Stock Club. Yes. And, and ultimately, you know, I, I'd like to, uh, you know, start, you know, in, investing in investment clubs, you know, in, okay. in different parts of, you know, Southern California, Inland Empire, you know, just to, you know, spread the knowledge. Yes. And you, you have to start somewhere. You don't become a, a master in, investor overnight. And so, you know, that, that's my thing. Hey, I, okay. And so my email address is tmore at 401k-403b.com. Okay. Got it. And so I, I try and be available. And <laughs> uh, it's time to rock and roll. And it's, well, uh, it's about baby steps. And you're absolutely right. Um, it is about baby steps and that's in anything you do, even if an entrepreneurship, <laughs> you, you guys a lot of times see the ending of everything. When somebody's put 20 years or 15 years into it, absolutely. even these very successful young entrepreneurs, they start like at 16 years old and um, at 26, they, that's over a decade. And you're looking at them like, oh, we're super successful at 26 years old. But uh, it's an actual guy I know in the finance industry. He started around 19. He made himself a multimillionaire by the time he was 28. And he always says he's a 10-year overnight success. And that holds true to you building wealth. Yes. It's not an overnight success. Truly, it is. It, it, it isn't. It actually takes time to generate that. And unfortunately, a lot of us aren't taught that. We're taught for instant gratification as we call it the McDonald model in our society. Now we want it yes. served up. It doesn't work. Yes. That way. And I don't care <laughs> if it's in entrepreneurship. I don't care if it's in wealth and you know, growth or investments. You have to have the patience and the resilience to build wealth. You really yeah. do. And yeah. I've had to learn that. I truly did. Cause when I look yeah. back and I had enough cash to do my, to start off on my own, I didn't realize 10 years just went by, but that's yeah. what it basically took me 10 years to putting that kind of money away to which I can go ahead and start my company in which yeah. I can go ahead and build this platform and be able to live and follow my passion. So with that being said, um, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add, Tim. Um, I'll try to think of, is there anything else we can maybe cover? You know, you know, just, you know, people think of working in corporations and big businesses, but you know, America is, is, is really, you know, about individualism. Yes. You know, one man, Henry Ford, started Ford Motor Company. Okay. You know, uh, you look at uh, Car Carnegie and, and, oh, and yes. his bank and, and, and Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. and, and those are the old timers. But you, you, you look at what uh, what Tesla, shoot, his name just... Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Look, look, look <laughs> Superstar, at the, I love look him. At, yeah, absolutely. Look, look at the disruption, you know, that he's called. Yes. Cause from the electric vehicles, you know, to, to space flight. And so what one person still can make a difference. Yes. And what, this, what the stock market allows you to do is, is you can ride the coattails of Elon Musk. You can ride the coattails of a Jeff, a Jeff Bezos yes. or uh, a, a Bill Gates. And so that's, that's the, the mindset that we need is that instead of owning a product, you know, I I, 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 I want to own some Apple, some Amazon. You know, now the Tesla stock, it's, it's a little too aggressive for me. So <laughs> I, 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 I admire Elon Musk from afar. But, you know, he, he, he's, he's done phenomenal things. But, uh, you know, c cloud computing is, yes. is a, a big deal. And so, 
you know, the in investment club, the one club that I do have started up, you know, we're going to be buying in, in the cloud com cloud computing. And so, okay. you know, ServiceNow, Coop to Software. Yes. Their workforce. Okay. Rather, Salesforce and Workday. So there are a, a lot of phenomenal companies. And I, I think last year they had a, an annualized return of in excess of 50%. That is you know, freaking so, huge. Yeah. So in January you have a dollar, and in December you have a dollar fifty. That's a lot of money. Th it, that definitely it, is. Yeah. You can parlay that type of return over 10, 15, 20 years. You, you'll be on your way to wealth creation. <laughs> and actually, on that note, I wanted to point something out, and I wish I tell my wife to this day. I wish I listened. I was so ignorant that years ago I worked in Southern South Orange County, which is a fluent area here in Southern California. And I was talking to a gentleman and he tried to explain to me if I put just this little bit of money away every year, this thing that's called compound interest. Yeah. <laughs> when he explained this to me, I, I didn't, but he, he drew it all on a nice piece of paper and everything else. And long story short, now that I look back 20 years, cause that was about 20 years ago, I had a conversation. The formula he gave me is a formula I saw now in college over and over all these years. And just putting X dollars away, not a whole bunch, I could have been sitting on about a half a million dollars. Absolutely. Absolutely. He absolutely. It's just really easy. So creating wealth is not a short-term strategy. It is a long end game. So understand yes. that. It is not a short-term strategy. Yes. Getting, getting rich is a short-term strategy. Grand wealth is a long-term strategy. Well, you know, you see the, you know, the athletes and entertainers who, who go through these millions and millions of dollar contracts, and yeah. next thing you know, you know, they're they're on, on hard time. And so there's a big difference between rich and wealth. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, for sure. For sure. And uh, it, it makes you wonder who coined the phrase "youth is wasted on the young." <laughs> because my thing is, is, is buy some stock, hold on to it, don't flip it, and uh, that, that'll be the stepping stones. Well, again, I do appreciate you for coming here on the show, and definitely Thanks you want to get out. Me. Yeah, absolutely, and it's for More Money Advisory. Check him. It's Timothy Moore. He's on LinkedIn. Um, check out his Facebook as well. He has the new Facebook group, and what was the name of the Facebook group? It's More Money Stock Club. So it's More Money Stock Club. Definitely, yeah. is it a private group or public group? Meaning, does somebody has to? You know, you know, you know it's 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 a it's a closed group. Okay, so it is a closed group. But if they, if you do me a favor, if you go ahead and try to join the group, and you want to mention, hey, I saw you, Tim, on Thomas's podcast or on the Rich Man Training podcast, um, please do so because I want you to start getting the mind state of ownership i want you to start at least getting the taste of what investing does so you can get, get some education there's no ed, no better education than getting experience experienced education you, you can't buy it. you can't i don't care in college i've got degrees i got all this other stuff but one thing i learned there is no better lesson in business investment entrepreneurship growth strategies whatever it is except the lessons or the knowledge experience from actually doing it yourself firsthand no, very true. You know, because, you know, co college is, is about preparing people for the workforce. Yes. And so that and that, that that's that's a, a, a good thing. But we like you say, it's a different mindset to prepare yourself for wealth creation or, or, or the desire for wealth. Absolutely. So with that being said, thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. And that's all I got. Hey, thanks for inviting me to your show, Thomas. All right. Gone. Take care. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.